Spain in 1976. A number of prisoners had just arrived at the prison that would become their new home. A young man named Manuel is one of them. On his first day, he meets many prisoners around him, including a 16-year-old boy named Ruby. The warden treats him very badly, not caring that he is still a minor. Manuel confronts the warden to help him, only for the warden to slap him. Before being taken to their cells, all prisoners were ordered to undress. They are thoroughly examined from head to toe. A warden named Domingo makes an offer for Manuel's clothes for 250 pesetas, but he refuses because the suit is quite expensive. Another warden, named Raymond, then advises him and says that Manuel should sell his clothes to Domingo. If he doesn't, someone will take them from him anyway. When the mattresses are distributed, everyone gets one, but not Manuel. He has to pay for 250 pesetas, but he doesn't have the money, and he doesn't want to sell his clothes either. He ended up having to sleep without a mattress. He also gets a bucket of water that can only be filled once a day. And the worst part is that the water is not for bathing but drinking water to quench his thirst for the next three days. Since he had not taken a proper bath, his body odor attracted an entourage of lice that bit him all over his body. Manuel looks pale from lack of sleep. He complains to the prison warden about not being allowed to take a shower. But his efforts are to no avail. In the midst of his argument with the warden, a man named Blackie, who was entrusted with the kitchen, arrives to distribute meals. As it turns out, Manuel and Blackie were once neighbors. Blackie warmly welcomes Manuel's arrival by giving him a few cigarettes as an act of friendship. As the days passed, Manuel still had no idea when he would be released, whether it would be after two years in prison or decades. Feeling frustrated and unable to stand being in prison, Manuel once again starts protesting by banging on the door of his cell, causing the head warden, Marino, to come to see him. As a result of his actions, the prison guards beat him. Three weeks passed, and Manuel was moved to the actual prison block. Out of all the prisoners, only Blackie greeted him kindly. Manuel is then placed in the same cell as Blackie. In the same cell as Blackie, there is also Pino, the most feared senior prisoner. Pino has a collection of books and novels that he rents out to other prisoners. Other than that, he also has a lot of nice clothes hanging near his bed. Blakey called him a dandy. As the owner of the Rue, Pino made it very clear that Manuel could not break his rules, or he would have to deal with him. After a while, visiting time arrived. Blackie is seen chatting with his wife and kid, but not Manuel, instead of his girlfriend, the one who comes to see him is his girlfriend's sister Lucia. While his girlfriend waits outside the prison, because she thinks Manuel is the most sinful man in the world. As a new convict, Manuel is being bullied by a prison gangster named Marbella. He took all his clothes by force, just as Ramon had told him. Bare-chested, Manuel filed a report about what had happened to him. To make it even worse, Ramon demands that he pay 300 pesetas if he wants to make a statement as the price of democracy. If he doesn't have the money, then there is no democracy for him. That's the way it is in prison. Money is everything. Thankfully, a man named Andres helps him. He offers Manuel free clothes and then takes him to see an ex-criminal, who happened to be a doctor named Boney. Boney is also in the cell with his subordinates, Augustine and Martin. As a doctor, Boney treats Manuel while advising him about the injustices of prison. All the warders are the real criminals. There is no such thing as justice. Money is the real justice. Boney then proposes that Manuel join a prisoner's rights association that fights for the right to amnesty for freedom as the country's leadership changes. But Manuel turns down the offer, fearing that trouble will come his way again. Afterwards, Blackie walks Manuel to a workshop where the prisoners work. Along the way, Blackie informs him about Marbella, the man who robbed his suit earlier. Marbella is the leader of all the prisoners in Block 6's special cell. The head of the workshop, Agustin, welcomes them and arranges work for Manuel, just like Bonnie ordered. Out of curiosity, Manuel asks Blackie about Pino. Blackie explains that Pino was sentenced to life imprisonment for robbing and killing policemen, so no one dared mess with him, not even the notorious warden, Domingo. Another visiting day arrived, and only Lucia came to see him. With the help of a priest, Lucia made the statement that she was Manuel's girlfriend. From that quick meeting, it becomes clear why Manuel is in jail. He is accused of stealing the company's money together with his boss's son, but the latter puts all the blame on him. The next day, Manuel is surprised by the roar of the prisoners, shouting for amnesty. This amnesty, or forgiveness of sentences, has been requested because of the depravity of the prison system.
which has lasted for 68 years. But the prisoners' demonstration becomes the stuff of Blackie and Pino's jokes about. They think the amnesty plea is just a dream, and despite the many people out there supporting them, the prison guards are still in control. Manuel is once again summoned by Boney for further examination, when in reality Boney asks him to write the word amnesty on a lot of paper using his left hand, so that the guards do not recognize his writing. As the days passed, Manuel had already written a lot of them. Throughout their imprisonment, Blackie always talked about his longing for his children and wife, yet he still had a very long sentence of 20 years in prison. As the morning came, a shocking thing happened. Blackie was taken down by the guards along with two other prisoners, Emilio and Blaines. The prison guards found a man-made hole in the kitchen, and Blackie was suspected of being part of the escape plan. Time passed quickly, and as lunchtime arrived, a warden approached Pino and delivered the sad news. Blackie was declared dead during interrogation due to a heart attack. The explanation obviously didn't make sense, and Pino didn't believe it, he thought something was wrong. Given the tight security of the prison cell, Blackie must have been killed to cover something up. Manuel tries to persuade Pino to investigate Blackie's death, but Pino refuses, according to him, there is no justice in prison, and fighting for Blackie will only bring him harm. All of a sudden, the prisoners gather in the center of the hall and shout that Blackie has died from the beatings during the interrogation. The guards swarm to the scene, beating them mercilessly. In the midst of the chaos, Manuel throws away the amnesty notes he had written. Following his actions, Manuel is dragged away and beaten, and he is then put into an isolation room. Indeed, the existence of the notes eventually paid off. A lawyer named Arnold has volunteered to defend Manuel. He got him out of solitary confinement, filed for an expedited trial, and tried to get all charges against him dropped. At the workshop, Agustin explains to everyone about the prisoners' rights association's fight for amnesty. Out there, politicians are fighting for the establishment of a democracy, and in prison, they must also fight for amnesty and try to attract politicians to visit the prison and support their cause. For this, the media must be used at all costs. As time passed, Manuel's condition began to improve, and Lucia regularly sent him letters of encouragement. There were some strange things happening in the prison. Every night, the guards dragged some prisoners out of their cells for no apparent reason, and one of them was Augustine. The prisoners immediately staged a protest. Led by Boney, the prisoners sliced off their own arms without caring about their dripping blood as a form of protest. The word amnesty is repeatedly and relentlessly chanted. Domingo then clarifies that Agustine has been transferred to another prison and is unlikely to return. Boney then seizes the opportunity to force Domingo to bring in the media. The warden, Marino, reluctantly granted Boney's wish for the prisoners to stop their protest. After the protest ended, the doctors set to work treating all the prisoners. The Prisoners' Rights Association gained popularity, and the media continued to cover it on radio and television. Politicians and democracy campaigners also began to speak out for justice. On the day of her next visit, Lucia brings him a copy of a newspaper that reports on Manuel's battle. Outside the prison, supporters have begun to form prisoner defense groups. A demonstration in front of the prison has also started, with protesters releasing a chicken carrying a piece of fabric with amnesty written on it, into the prison walls. The guards then chased after it, and the sight was a source of amusement for the prisoners, including Pino. From that day on, Pino, who had always been indifferent to the prisoner's fight, asked Manuel to register him as a member of the Prisoner Rights Association, or PRA. As a new fighter, the first thing Pino does is drag and expel Campos, the complainant, and his partner from their block. They had been the eyes and ears of the guards. In June 1977, the first democratic elections began. Pino, Boney, and Manuel go to the block six cells to see Marbella. As it turns out, Ruby, the boy Manuel helped at the beginning of the movie, is there. Pino comes to invite Marbella to join the PRA and plan a full-scale riot by burning down the prison. They do so to attract the media, but Marbella turns him down, thinking that it will bring him harm and destroy all the luxuries of prison that he has had so far. But Pino doesn't run out of ideas, he then puts a ring on the table. Marbella knew it well, it belonged to his son. Pino then tells him that his son was stabbed to death by two prisoners on the orders of Warden Domingo. The news enrages Marbella, and he no longer cares about the luxuries of prison. His goal now is to avenge his son. On their return from Block 6, Pino's and Manuel's rooms were intentionally raided by the guards. 
the entire collection of books that had been neatly arranged was taken out to the prison yard and set on fire as a warning for Pino's actions. When morning came, after the distribution of the meals, one of the prisoners was seen having epilepsy. His whole body was in seizures. But as it turns out, it was just an act. The incident is part of the prisoner's plan to take a warden hostage. The big plan will soon be executed. Led by Pino and Boney, the prisoners, in unison, destroyed the prison and set it on fire. They occupied the rooftop of the prison while trying to survive the rubber bullet attacks from the prison officers. Their fight finally succeeded, and the whole city began to rise up, voicing their support. After the madness, Arnold goes back to the prison and asks some of the prisoners to attend the negotiations. Boney and Manuel volunteered to take part in the negotiations. Arnold requests that the police officers be kept away from the prisoners, and that a judge be brought in as a mediator. Following the agreement, the detainees surrendered and laid down all their weapons. However, one of the prisoners recognizes the judge who served as a witness. Apparently, he is an undercover prison officer. A few moments later, the prison guards arrived and beat up all the prisoners relentlessly. The warden had lied and tricked all the prisoners so that they would surrender. Later that evening, Manuel is summoned before the head of prison, Marino, along with Boney, who's also dragged away without any explanation. Manuel is forced to sign a paper requesting a prison transfer and stating that he will be released immediately after serving his two-year sentence. If he refused to sign it, the report of his rioting would be prosecuted, and it could result in an additional 10 years in prison. If he committed another violation, then each violation would add another 10 years to his sentence. Who knows what Manuel was thinking, but he refused Marino's offer. The next day, the prison guards take Boney out of his cell. As it turned out, Boney had accepted the terms of a prison transfer with a reduced sentence. All the prisoners, who didn't know about it, were still encouraging Boney, but not Manuel, who had learned that Boney had given up fighting with them. Boney had taken his freedom for himself. That day, Lucia goes back to see Manuel, and she confesses her feelings to him. Her sister had ditched him, and she is taking her place. She tells him that she will never betray him. Later that night, Manuel and Pino are taken by the guards, and no one knows about it. With their heads covered, they are taken by car to El Espinar prison, a prison on the Spanish border that specializes in serious criminals. They both received an injection of a special drug that made their muscles stiffen so that if they stepped on the floor, they would feel a stinging pain that would result in infectious wounds. They are beaten until they are unconscious before entering the detention room. They are then told the rules of the prison. Every time the guards checked their cells, they had to stand with their arms outstretched. If they refused to obey, the guards would beat them again until they fainted. No protests or complaints, or they would pay the price. Driven by frustration and deep mental distress, Pino and Manuel resort to extreme measures. They swallow the bed bolts so that they can be referred to a doctor for examination. Pino claims that the guards forced them to swallow the bolts, and eventually the doctors were willing to write a note of demand for the two of them to be transferred back to their former institution. As the story goes, Pino and Manuel finally returned and were welcomed like heroes. The PRA fighters then once again gather together to negotiate the next plan. Arnold and his comrades will again submit another amnesty application to the new democratic government. One by one, the other prisoners start to take the same steps. Every week there will be a prison burned down, and it continues every week. Finally, one day, a new democratic politician named Valdez comes to visit and expresses his desire to speak with PRA representatives. Manuel is then appointed as the prisoner's representative to organize the negotiations. After reading all the complaints and reports, Valdez agrees with everything. He emphasizes that all prison guards should act fairly. Manuel later reveals that in front of the people, the wardens claim to be acting fairly, but in reality, they are the ones controlling the rules. As Valdez had emphasized, the warders were finally stopped from being so arbitrary. Pino and Manuel are moved to special cells in Block 6, and Marbella welcomes them and treats them as special guests. One by one, the Democratic senators join in the call for amnesty, and so do the prisoners, cheering the amnesty. Freedom is in sight, and amidst the excitement, Manuel spots Ruby talking to Domingo. They seem to be talking about something. Later that evening, Manuel goes to Marbella to tell him about Ruby. However, before he could say a word, another prisoner knocked on the door, who happened to be the complainant, Campos. Campos then presents Marbella with a gift of handicrafts he made. Marbella is pleased with the gift and is about to give him two bottles of beer. 
That's when Ruby barges in and stabs Marbella to death. As it turns out, Campos and Ruby conspired to kill Marbella on Domingo's orders, and in return, they were allowed to take everything Marbella owned. When Ruby spots Manuel, he remembers his kindness. He then let Manuel go and handed him the two packs of cigarettes he had bought, as if nothing had happened. One day, the announcement of the decision that amnesty has been rejected hits everywhere. As Valdez had said, they could only reform the law so that prisoners had the right to justice. But as for amnesty, they couldn't do that. Manuel feels disappointed, so he takes out his frustration by beating up the prison warden who mocked his amnesty fight, and in return, he is beaten to a pulp. After his isolation sentence is over, Pino invites him to carry out the plan that has only been in his mind. As it turns out, on one side of the prison, there is an elevator that has not been used for a long time. From the elevator, they can see the prison yard. However, it isn't an escape route, they have to dig up the floor and tunnel to the sewer, and they have to do it in less than three weeks, otherwise, the anti-escape team will renovate the prison. The digging must be completed before they come. Manuel starts to figure out how to dig a tunnel without being spotted by the guards. Eventually, he comes up with the idea of bringing in a few trustworthy people and assigning some to play soccer continuously to block out the noise of the digging at the beginning of the hole. As the days passed, the digging process went smoothly. No one was aware of their work. However, unexpectedly, in the middle of the work, Ruby and Campos found them. And inevitably, they had to get the two of them to join the escape plan. Two weeks later, Arnold comes back and informs them about the new government's agreement to review every crime committed by the prisoners. However, Manuel no longer cares about the amnesty application. The only thing he wants to know is when the trial will begin. During his three years in prison, Manuel waited, fought, resisted, and was beaten and tortured almost to death. However, nothing had changed. The trial had not taken place, as if they were deliberately delaying it. He feels his struggle is back to square one imprisonment with no legal certainty as to when he will be released. After three weeks of secret digging, they finally found the opening to the sewer, which was the real exit. The preparations were set in motion immediately. Pino gives Manuel a set of his best clothes that they will use once they get outside. Through his connections, Pino also fabricates a new identity for Manuel. By the time he made it out, the old Manuel was dead, and there was only Daniel. On that particular day during the welcoming of new government officials, only one guard was on duty. Ruby soon goes into action, threatening the guard and dragging him into the tunnel. Pino and Manuel take a different route, the one near the bus station. Before exiting the tunnel, they change into luxurious outfits so that when they are outside, no one can recognize them as escaped prisoners. However, not everyone is as lucky as they were. Some prisoners were caught, and some managed to escape. Manuel and Pino manage to get on the bus and travel to a faraway place. After five hours of traveling, the two friends shake each other's hands to say goodbye for the last time. Unexpectedly, Pino had slipped a wad of money into Manuel's shirt pocket and he was thrilled to see it. With that money, he could take Lucia away with him and start a new life in a faraway place where no one would recognize him.